Okay, guys, let's get into these cathedral window little pillow ornaments. They're so cute. And I really like the size that this is. It comes out really, really, really nicely. So I'm using a fat quarter. This is just one that I picked up at Joann's. And the colors kind of match this blue and red that I'm going for, kind of tealish kind of red, turquoise, somewhere in that wheelhouse. And so what I'm trying to do is grab a 10 by 10 inch square from this. And I was able to actually get two. And I am going to use this square to build on. And I'm just making sure that it's all nice and squared up. I'm using my big 12 and a half inch ruler. And it looks, it looks good. Ooh, a little eggnog for the season. And again, like I said, I was able to get two out of this fat quarter. Matter of fact, I was able to get the back for this also out of the fat quarter. You'll see, I'm gonna need to cut some five inch squares too. So this is a 10 inch square. And we're just gonna square it up. I love these Creative Grids rulers. If you guys don't have any, I really feel like you should look into them because they are really, really nice rulers. I am a fan, a fan, a fan. So after I get the 10 inch squares, I'm going to use the rest of this to cut some five inch squares down. And that's gonna be the finished size of this, um, of the actual cathedral pillow. So you'll see we've got a five inch square here and we're gonna square it up. And this is how I square up my stuff. I cut stuff a little bit bigger and then I come back around the sides and just trim it up so that it's nice and precise. This is one of those ornaments when pre precision really, it, it's gonna be your friend. Um, I know I'm always preaching just do whatever, but yeah. So all of these are five and a half except for the masks, which I cut down to four and a half. And I'm gonna just fold this in half and give it a press because I need to follow these lines. I'm just grabbing the lines for this, that's all. It's not like I'm really trying to do much more than that here, I just wanna find center. And then we're gonna fold the triangles into the center, one at a time, or two at a time, it depends. Um, I think I did two so that you get a nice point. You're trying to get it as accurate as possible, you're not gonna be perfect, at least I'm not. Um, so let's go two at a time, I should say. And again, you're just trying to get it to come to a nice point if you can, and then hit it with that iron. I'm pressing on my wool mat here, just so that you guys can see. I take it over to my ironing board and I try to get a much more crisp fold. So we're gonna fold those edges in one more time and give it another press. And we're going, and I mean, when I say I'm pressing this, I'm pressing it hard because this is quite a bit of fabric folded over and it's uh, it's thick. So if you have a little starch, it's not gonna hurt, starch it up. And now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna throw a piece of fabric in here. If it's a little bit too big, not a problem because of all the folding, you're just gonna trim it down just a, just a smidge. So you might wanna take an eighth of an inch off. You might wanna take a quarter of an inch off just try to get it so that it fits right behind there in that square the best you can. Then you're gonna take some pins and you're going to secure the little envelope together because now we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and I started at probably about a quarter of an inch up and then just sew right down through the center and I'm gonna pop up and we're gonna sew straight down the center. Then I'm gonna back stitch because I'm going to be putting some pressure here. And then you're gonna do the same thing for the ones that go the other direction. And make sure that it's nice and secured. Now we're gonna take this four and a half inch square and we're just gonna cut it up into some smaller triangles. And I'm using my rotating mat so that I don't have to disturb the fabric and I'm going across one way and then I'm going across the other way. And then I'm done, just that simple. And now I have four triangles. Because I'm making two ornaments, I'm doing another one. And if you guys want to super mass produce these, you really can. It seems like these things take a long time, but really the cutting is what takes up 
the most time in my opinion. So if you do this assembly line style and just cut a ton of 10 inch squares, a ton of five inch squares, and then a ton of the four and a half inch squares and you'll love it. You'll be like, huh, this isn't that bad. So right now I'm just testing to see what it looks like when I put these on. I should have about an eighth of an inch around. And look, it's all cute. I put them back the way that I got, like the way that I cut it. So you can see that the masks kind of come together. I like that. It kind of gives it some, I don't know, some symmetry, I guess you could say. I use Elmer's white glue in this bottle applicator and it's just got a fine tip on it. And I do a little bit of basting here. I'm not putting a ton of glue down, just enough to get it to stick. You really wanna be sure that it sticks at the tips, all the tips. And then you do the same thing for all of them. I hit that with an iron just to make it go faster and dry faster. Then you simply pull these back on either side. No rhyme or reason to the way that I did this. I just rolled it back until it looked nice to me, until it looked good. And then I just stitched it, stitched it down. So here I'm just pulling it back until I reveal the fabric that is underneath I have a zipper foot on because it kind of keeps it it keeps it kind of pushed down for me and I'm able to see that edge stitch really nicely and I just go slow and I just go around it a friend of mine we're having a conversation today about not using your feet they're like a crutch you know so you can probably do this without a zipper foot um, you see that's a nice clean it's a nice clean stitch. It kind of stays the same uh, length away from the side. I think it looks pretty good. I do all the ones on the left hand side so that I don't have to move my zipper foot. So you see I'm doing another one that's opening to the left and I just keep doing that going all the way around until I do all the ones on the left. Then I move that zipper foot over to the right and then I don't even have to worry about it. Just do all the ones to the left. This is fun. <laughs> you know, usually stitching like this makes me nervous because I'm so scared that it's gonna go off or I'm gonna miss a stitch or whatever. Not that serious. Just relax and have fun with it. There are so many different fabrics that you, could you just imagine all the different combinations you can come up with? Now notice that big blue square is the one that you, you it's the one that's being shown when you pull it back. So kind of think about which color you want to put where, which color you want to be the reveal. And the masks are really the showstopper on this, but you just have to figure it out the best way you want to do it. So now I'm taking that last square and I'm putting it right sides together. And then we're going to go around and stitch, but we're going to leave a hole for the opening. Now we're going to add a, an ornament hanger here. Pay attention to what you're doing because I wasn't and what I should have done was stay stitched this way better so I just went ahead and I folded it fold the ribbon threw a pin in there I did a stay stitch but I should have you see the one on the left I should have been paying attention to that because I caught that in the seam and so my ornaments a little wonky but don't do that make sure that the ribbon is not gonna get caught in the seam so I left a little hole right there you can see the hole on the right and I stitched around it and I left a hole at the bottom on that one. I left about a two and a half inch gap. See the hole? There it is. And that's because we're going to stuff it so that we get the pillow effect. You don't have to. You do what you want to do, but that's what we're doing for this pillow on mine. So before we do that, we are going to need to trim away some of these corners just so that when you flip it inside out, you have a nice, a nice corner. Otherwise, it's too much fabric in the in the seams. So I'm just grabbing a ruler and I'm tipping that stuff off just in the corners. I did not need to use my ruler for this. Just be sure that you don't snip the seams. That's what would really be the issue here. So I leave about less than an eighth. I'm putting it just over that fabric. And there we go. And that's all four corner snips. Do the same thing on the others. Take your time on this because this would be where things go very left <laughs> if you don't. Then you chop into your ornament. And I don't know how to teach you to fix that. So, again, be careful here. 
and just take off all four corners. And with this hole, there are a couple of different ways that you can close it up. You can stitch it. I actually glue mine. I use fabric permanent glue. I haven't had an issue with the permanent glue coming apart. Um, it says that it's permanent. It says that you can wash it. It says that you can use it to hem. And sometimes, oftentimes, I do not want to. I just don't want to <laughs> hand stitch. I don't love hand stitching all the time. So I turned it inside out and I stuffed it and I used some glue to close it. It's just as simple as that. Turn it inside out, put some stuff in, some polyfill in there. And now I'm using a button to stitch down the center so that you get that puffy kind of effect. And that's it. And I did have to hand stitch. Actually, I didn't, but I did end up hand stitching this. I could have done this with the machine too. And that is the ornament, guys. It's just a cute little pillow. If you guys made it all the way through the video, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you don't mind, please like, subscribe, and come back and hang out with me again. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys, and I have so much more to come in the following year. All right, bye-bye.